Hi, my name's Kayleen West and I'm a children's author, illustrator and surface designer. And this video is on how to scan watercolours. Often I'm in uh, forums on Facebook talking to artists and designers and illustrators and the question is often posed or asked, um, you know, how do you do it without them looking bleached? Because they do. I've had them professionally scanned before myself and they've still been bleached and I've had to adjust them in Photoshop. So I'm going to show you quickly how I do it. Um, it works pretty easily for me and I do send these files off to publishers without any issues. So so it's um, it's been okay and it's worked for me. I have read lengthy articles on how to do this and have been able to understand them myself so I, I've kind of figured it out for myself. So uh, this illustration here was done on watercolour paper that wasn't pure white and that's often the case. Uh, I do actually like to use a slightly off white paper. So it's very hard for me to decipher the accuracy of the um, the tones in this on screen and depending on your monitor and if it's calibrated that's an issue also. So what I've done is I've scanned this image with a little swatch. You can see down in the corner here there's a swatch that I've created out of black and very white, pure white paper and I place that under the glass with the illustration and preferably off the illustration if that's possible and scan it with it. This illustration was too big to do that. It was it actually ex exceeded the the glass, and you know that creates buckling and blurring and so forth. So usually, if this is the case with this, and the image still is, you know, I can still scan the image in that area. What I'll do is I'll grab a, a pile of A3 photocopy paper and put it on top before I put the scanner lid down and that way it presses against the glass and I don't get that wrinkling. Uh, in this one you can see on the edge that hasn't pressed down quite enough and I can see, I don't know if you can see it on screen, but I can see a slight wrinkling here. Now I would normally fiddle with that until it, I didn't have that, um, but because this is an exercise I'm not worrying about it too much. All you do is you go to the adjustments panel if you have that out otherwise you find it under window in the top navigation bar adjustments there. Open that up. Um, I'm using CS5 too so there's a possibility yours could be in a different spot but that's where mine is. Open it up and select the levels. Now in the past and for a very long time I used this manually and did it by eye. I was taught to do it this way in TAFE um, but you are, I mean you are relying on what you see and I think probably I would be more likely to make it a little bit darker than what it, it really is. So what I do now is you can see these colour pickers here to the side. The top one looks like it's filled with black ink and the bottom looks like it's filled with white. Uh, if you select the white one and then select the white of your swatch, now you won't be able to see much on this. I've done that and you really can't see much change. But when you select the black one, you do both the black and the white. When you select the black one you'll, set, you'll watch it change and that has changed the levels itself. I would I would highly recommend you never ever use the auto. It's always wrong. I mean if I was to do that, I'll undo that. If I was to hit auto, oh it's not too bad this time, it's going to prove me wrong. But anyhow it's not as accurate so I much prefer that method. See in two seconds I've done it. Okay so what do I do if the image, I'll just close that, what do I do if the image um, is big like this and I don't want that swatch there. I'll show you how I get rid of that. 
but first I'll go to the levels panel and I'll select both the levels and the background or the image and merge them. I've just right clicked there. Now to unlock that I'll just hold the Alt key and double click and that unlocks that. Now I can work on this image freely. Uh, if you're a bit worried about messing your image up just drag it down onto a new layer, create a new layer and turn that one off. Now the quickest way to get rid of this is to use the rubber stamp tool. Now I'll just blow this up. To get a nice smooth transition if I use the opacity on 100% um, I will see some edges. So I'll turn that down to about 50 or 60 percent and then select the paper area here and that's what I want to copy across here and I'll go up here so wherever you select with the alt is going to copy across so that's it done I mean even these these could be deleted using that same same method. Uh, if you don't want a hard edge just swap your brush over to a softer edge brush and for those who haven't used the, the clone tool you can take any part of your image and extend it so if I wanted to if that flower was isolated and I want to throw a flower somewhere else I'd just click the Alt key and I could put it somewhere else on my image. Now because that's opacity's down we're not getting the proper flower. There we go, a bit better. So you can do that and and I'll do the little boy's face. I'll just click the Alt tool on that and just if I blow it up so you can see it gives you a bit of a preview before you start painting with it. Um, when I start, as soon as I press my finger on the mouse you can see the cross pop up on his face. That will follow where I'm brushing so that will move as I go so I'll be able to see what I'm grabbing which is handy if you're down you know on the edge of a paper and you're just trying to clean up the edge or something and you end up off the edge and then you get those you know just part of an image. So that's how you clone with it. So it comes in handy occasionally. So anyway that's how you scan watercolors or how I scan watercolors. So I hope that makes your life a bit easier and if you like the video and you're watching it on YouTube can you please click like. Thank you.